Um, well, my name is Ted, Ted Carpenter. Uh, to, the Picasso came with the tattoos. You okay. Know? And, okay. Um, I think, I think I was drawn, you know, I think I was drawn and I was doodling or something. And then someone was like, what you, what you think you Picasso or something? You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I ran with it. Wow. Uh, that okay. was, it, that's the, how simple that was. Um, I'm a tattoo artist. I'm an artist in general. Uh, uh, self-taught. I, um, I'm, I guess, I guess you can say I'm in, I'm from the DC area, but I moved around a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I live with my, uh, mother, uh, my father, he was more so up Marlboro based. My mother was more so, uh, Suitland based. And then we, uh, I lived in Bowie for a period of time. And, um, I think after I lived in Bowie, that's a, that's when I started tattooing. So let me ask you this. That name sounds familiar to some people. They probably know. This is the son of the D. Teddy Carpenter from Deaf Comedy Jam, the comedian. How is it being the son of a comedian? Are you funny too? I'm funny. I just don't go up on stage. I know how to work the stage. I know how, to, you know, just from watching him for the past 20 years. I really feel like I know how to move the crowd. Uh, but I've only been on stage maybe like two or three times and I was a kid, so. But I'm gonna do it one day when I get older. He just won't let me open up for him. Ah, so you really wanna do some comedy? Uh, Yeah, I don't wanna, um, see with him, he takes it very serious and I'm like that the same time. I'm like that with my tattoos, so. If I'm not taking it serious, he's not going to take me serious. Right. You know? Right. So, uh, and then, so, but growing up, it was, I mean, it was, it, it was luxury. If you want to be honest, it was definitely luxury because everybody knew who he was. So I got away with murder with everybody. So if I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got in trouble in school. I got away with it. I get in trouble with anybody. I wasn't a bad kid. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But. I just knew I, I was a finesser, and I knew how to finesse my way out of things. It's like, you know, so with you my father. The system. You worked that system, too. You used that clout. Right. Wow, that's good. Of course. So uh, did you travel any with your father? Um. Yeah, yeah and no. So he took me. I didn't, I didn't get on the plane a lot with him. So most of the places we went, it was driving. And uh, he owned his own club. So, you know, when I was like, I, I say when I was like maybe nine or 10, I used to be in the back of the club all the time. So it wasn't really no traveling because he had his own spot for real. It was in yeah. D.C. And I can't wait to, because, you know, he did say he's going to give me an interview too. I can't wait to interview Teddy and really, really get into it because I know the, I want to see and hear about him as a father and as a grandfather and uh, your brother who played the sport, that whole journey, because everybody know, knows him as a comedian, so I can't wait to find out. But let's get back to you, because I know a lot of times when children have parents who are celebrities or who have done anything, a lot of times you're in their shadow. So uh, I don't want you to feel like you're in his shadow, but I did want to acknowledge the fact that you were Teddy Carpenter Jr. and uh, pay homage to your dad. Well, I'm not a junior. Okay, so we got different middle names. Okay, and his name, uh, of course, his name is Theodore. My name not Theodore. Okay, so that's that's one of the things that I used to get in trouble with back in the day because they used to try to play with me and say and call me Theodore. Uh huh. And I, my name ain't Theodore, so I can like <laughs> I I used to get in real trouble about that, and I argue with teachers and all type of stuff. Wow. So when did you decide? that you wanted to become a tattoo artist? Um, I was going through hard times. And, uh, I was staying with a friend of mine. And, um, I, I, in the midst of me being in his house. So hard times, when I say hard times, uh, my grandmother passed. I was living with my grandmother and my mother. My grandmother passed. I'm sorry uh, to hear that. Sit up a little. You got a you got a light in your eyes. So okay, good. Right there, perfect. My grandmother passed, 
and after she passed, you know, a lot of emotions and, you know, with my mother and stuff like that. And she went through the motions of, you know, losing her mother. And uh, in the midst of that, I stayed with a friend. My father was real busy out of town doing his thing. He trying to uh, stay above water and stuff like that. And uh, I stayed with a friend. And at the time, I was I was going through a lot of things like fire school, emotional problems because my grandmother died and how she died. And uh, I dropped out of school. So at like 15, I dropped out of school. And they were, my parents was pissed. My father was pissed, like pissed. Like he was really mad at me. You know what I'm saying? Almost shunned me type mad. Wow. But, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, I just stopped. I stopped going to school. I didn't believe in the system. I didn't believe it was I wasn't, wasn't like I wasn't smart enough. I just didn't want to go. You know what I'm saying? And then once my grandmother died, I had problems with that. I was staying with a friend and my friend was still going to school. So, you know, his family basically gone all day. You know, his mother, father, they go to work. Uh, he go to school. He had another little, he had a little brother too. So a little brother go to school. Everybody gone. I'm in the house all day. And uh, I think that's when I realized what life really was. Mm 